since you asked the question, we'll go with it this way. Since we do use Arbiter Pay now, uh, we go with, I gotta find a home game. All right, so here I got girls varsity soccer. So the morning of August 20th, we're gonna come in. I'm gonna click on the uh, official's jersey and immediately the officials for that day come up. Right here it has print voucher. I click on it. All their information comes up. Name, address, only the last four of their social security number. We don't have any W9s to worry about because they did that through Arbiter. All they have to do is come in and sign in data. The next morning this gets turned into us. We go into Arbiter Pay. We click the four officials to be paid and we're done. It, it really is that. So, uh, what the turnaround time is, and they're getting paid tomorrow. Them getting paid 24 hours. Gotcha. Yeah, it's it's pretty sharp. Yeah. Um, and what's really nice with the print voucher is, you know, let's say an hour before the game, Tim Meyer got in an accident and they sent a replacement. There's a blank spot for somebody to fill it in. So they just cross off Tim. Now the one thing, like here, you can see their payments are zero. Um, our volleyball signer hasn't gone back to put in their fee yet, but our football signer, they're already in there. Um, but even when, when I go in to pay them, I can change the pay within that page, but that's another piece for another day. Scott, just a quick question on what came up uh, in Arbiter Pay uh, when we were talking yesterday. If they're on Arbiter Pay that is just assumed and that they have already went in and did all the direct deposit stuff they need, or there's Correct. some people. So One of the things, but I, and I can show you, when, when the next day after a game, we come into payments, and anybody that's worked already who has not been paid comes up on this screen. Okay, so you can see here, I have a baseball umpire and a basketball umpire. Uh, one is owed $57 and one is owed 80 because they flat out dug their heels in and said, I'm not getting an arbiter pay. And OHSAA and my treasurer said, that's fine, we're not paying you until you do. <laughs> So we're ready to pay them, and as soon as they have an Arbiter Pay account, they're gonna get paid. Um, if I would've had a game last night and there were four or five officials, they would've showed up here too. And what's really cool then, there's been boxes here. I'd click those five boxes, and I would hit Made Payment, and it'd be done. Cool. So it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty cool. And they love it, because then it's, they get it. I don't know that we've had an official one within 24 hours. Now, like I said, the OHSAA has said, we can take that position. Of, if we're only paying through Arbor Pay. So in January, when we first went to this, I called all our signers and I said, don't assign anybody who doesn't want Arbor Pay. And I think he ended up having to reassign a couple. These two just thought we were kidding. Now, the one thing that OHSA has told me is if they haven't done it yet, they are making registration on Arbor Pay part of the official certification mm -hmm. process. Okay. So, and it's, and it's going to be, I think, I'm trying to get them to do it for the district board this year where all the tournament officials are going to be paid by Arbor, um, at least in the Southwest. But it's not, right now, regionals and state are paid by Arbor. Uh, but it's real, they're real close to the aspects that all tournament officials are going to go through Arbor. So uh, it's going to be a requirement. They're all going to get there. Um, but again, I get, I get two guys that don't seem real worried about it. So, and I can tell you I'm not worried about it. But the money's there for them when they want it. Um, Okay, so then we go to reports. Basically, anything you want to run reports on, you can. Um, what I primarily use is, is on the left side, if you go down to teams, you can do team schedules. So you select the team you want to do. So I'll do boys varsity football, all games. 16-17 season and all, all games home and away. And then over here I have view report and RC schedule pops up. Now you have three options, or you have more than three options, but uh, if you go, if you look right above where it says my name, Scott Kaufman AD up here on the screen, you see the old floppy diskette looking thing? That is where you can export this information. You can export it into a spreadsheet a PDF file, an Excel file, a Word file, I've never used TIFF, so I, and a web archive. There's seven different formats that you can download this schedule into. So I can schedule, or I can download it into a PDF. 
I can print this and now I have a printable schedule. Um, same thing, I can do it into a Word document. Nice part about doing a Word document is it gives me the ability to edit it. Or I can do it into a Excel, Excel spreadsheet, which gives me a lot more opportunities to manipulate it um, however you want. So there's three different ways uh, that I primarily use for downloading it into something specific. Okay. Um, again, if you use the transportation pool, you can do a you know a week of transportation. Again, I don't use it, so it wouldn't help me to run a report right now. But ultimately, if I use the transportation and I put in a week's worth, it would it would give me my dismissal time, my departure time, and my return time. I could give that to the coaches. I could give that to my transportation office. Um, I could do anything I want with it in the aspects of trying to communicate with people what it is. I can print my schedule by sport. Um, I can look at game contracts. I can actually print games. You know, let's say I just wanted to do a week's worth of games. Um, you know, August 15th to August 19th, all games for, I don't know, all games. Um, boys varsity soccer. It would give me the date, it would give me the opponent, and it would give me the officials that are working that game within that report. Um, let's see if I can expand it. Right so there we go. Uh, August 20th, 7.15 p.m., Warriors Varsity Basketball, or Varsity Soccer versus Centerville. It's at Centerville, but I still get the names of the officials. Um, so that's another report you can run. You can do a master schedule. Um, Again, you, know, you guys can read it. One of the things that we do for reporting purposes is uh, fees by sport. If you're using our, uh, if you're using an assigner and your assigner's putting in the, the uh, contract amounts, uh, if, if for some reason your central office needs a report of how much is spent on a sport, you can put in a date range. And so I know for for football during the month of August, I'm going to spend $894 in, um, in, in officials' fees. In soccer, $363, and in volleyball, but she doesn't have the fees in there yet, so it's zero. So your central office might like to see that information. It might help you for budgeting purposes, so the information's there. Uh, and again, you know, go through the reports. It's just a matter of playing with them to see one, which ones help you. Um, and again, remember, any report you run, you can put it into a Word document. An Excel document or into a PDF file. Um, Scott, does this have the ability then to send that that uh, spreadsheet to you know by email to someone directly? Yeah, I mean, because you can make the spreadsheet, save it as a file, and then you can just email the file. Some, okay, some some occasionally have like a oh a send, but I, I haven't seen that. Cool. But you can save the file and, and send absolutely. Um, showing some links at the top again. If, if you click on your school. It'll just show you who you're connected to. <clears throat> I'm going to assume everybody has a OHSAA contact in there. Your own school will be in there. And then whatever your assigners that you're currently linked with. So if you do not see your assigner's name in that menu, contact that assigner. Tell them you need to be connected to your Arbiter account. The support button. Um, Arbiter has online help. They have email support. They have phone support. My understanding is they're pretty slow with the email responses and you'll be on hold a while for the phone calls depending upon what time you call. I'll be honest, if you have a question, call me and I can tell you if I can answer it. If I, if I can't, um, I'll tell you I can't, but in most cases I've been able, the calls I get, I've been able to answer most of the questions. Um, and then if you click on your own email, you can look at your profile uh, or switch accounts. By switching accounts, it brings you back to this home page where you can actually go into your assigner's page. It's really what that's for. You probably won't ever use it, but that's what that is there for. Uh, let's see, some of the tricks of the trade. Once you enter your own home event, if your team is set up right, your assigner will have it right away. 
If you didn't pre-set up your assigner, he won't have it. You're certainly able to enter your away events, but just understand that might come with some issues because your opponent might not be set up right or they might not have gone in and accepted the contract. Now I will tell you, one of the things that I would recommend that you do, if you're going to be an active user on this, if you go to settings, um, and right above where it says school settings, you see it has preferences. One of the things that, that is Arbiter is set up as a default is if the AD hasn't changed it and you schedule, let's say, I can't pick on Tom, Tom hasn't changed this setting yet. If I schedule a game against Walnut Hills and he hasn't done anything with it, I can actually go into the system and accept the game for him. That scares the hell out of me. Um, by clicking this box, somebody else cannot accept your games for you. Okay, so again, where that was, on the, on the top menu, settings, the gray bar below it, go to preferences, and check that box to prevent others from accepting your game contracts. Okay, now I'm an OCD, so I like that eight, some ADs haven't done that. <laughs> but again, you don't want people messing with your schedules. So again, by putting in a way contact a contest, you you know there are going to be some headaches and there are going to be some flaw, some flaws, um, and you're just going to be ready to work through those issues. Again, decide as a lead if you're just going to do home or if you're going to do all. And again, if you're doing just home, you're really dependent upon your colleagues. And remember that weakest link comment that I made. And again, that's not meant to slam anybody. It's just the realities of what we do. Baseball softball is without a doubt the hardest piece of this system with assigners. I mean, you guys know better than anybody what we deal with with rainouts and game changes. What we ended up deciding with our assigner, and we use Kevin Niemoller <coughs> for baseball and softball, is I entered the initial schedule. Once I was done entering the initial schedule, I worked it out with Kevin where the rest of the season I didn't touch Arbiter for baseball softball. Kevin did the rest. He made changes, he made updates, he made cancellations. It just worked best because he didn't want me to cancel a game or postpone a game because then he would lose the officials and it, it was his preference. So when it comes to baseball and softball, I would have a conversation with who your assigner is on how they, how they want to deal with it because there's so many changes in baseball and softball. The other sports is not that big a deal because you, know, you might get a snow out in basketball or a lightning you know, redo for football. But Baseball, softball, you're dealing with daily changes. For us, it worked well. I didn't touch Arbiter for baseball and softball once I put in the initial season. Um, some of the, you know, again, little tricks. On your dashboard, you know, you see those, uh, the boxes on the left. By clicking boxes and then using actions up here, you can kind of bulk transactions, for example, if you know, I have a few uh, yellow contracts, which ultimately means they're waiting on, well, on the yellow, I'm waiting on my opponent to accept them. But bottom line, if I have to accept a bunch of contracts after I filter something, I can check the boxes, I can come here, and I can hit accept contract. That way it just helps you from having to go into each individual game. Uh, so that, you know, that's a little time-saving trick. And with that, you can publish games, unpublish games, accept contracts, or you know, work on transportation. Um, again, if your teams are set up right, your assigner is going to get it your home events immediately. Uh, again, I'm a fan of Arbor Pay. The nice thing with the dashboard is all the information you need for a game is on your dashboard. Um, you know, for example, as I look at this game. I can look at my game contract and I can look at my officials. Uh, these other boxes are whether or not you use that information. One of them is for transportation, uh, one of them is for facility requests, and then this last one is for game workers. So if you have information in those fields, there'll be little icons that actually pop up in those areas. Um, and all that's visible on your dashboard. Some of the frustrations, <coughs> I've had better success using Chrome over Internet Explorer. I don't know why, it's just a system thing. Um, I have the plays of the circles. It seems to be faster than it was four months ago, and they tell us they're working on that. 
one of the things that I've found, if you go to the bottom of your screen, if your system seems to be working really slow on any given day, you can come down to this very bottom left-hand corner and you can reset your session and it'll put you on a different server. Maybe a different server will go a little faster for you. But that was always one of my gripes in my OSHA, it was always spinning circles. Um, if an opponent enters a game at your site and they don't do it properly, it's something you're going to have to go in and fix. Just a, just a pain. Um, one of the things, and again, part of the transition dealing with assigners, um, assigners had a way that worked for them. Now ADs are involved with it, so you're, we're getting some headaches from assigners. Um, one of the headaches from the assigner is, if I put in a game at an away site, that assigner's calling me saying, the assigner can't delete the game, I'm the only one that's allowed to delete the game. That assigner's bitching at me saying, he doesn't have access to the game, well, I've been barking back to the assigner saying, don't call me, the game's in there, right? Call the other school, have them accept the contract, and they'll have it just fine. Um, so there are some headaches that assigners are dealing with, and it's taking them more time, and they're getting irritated, but that's just the way of the system. Um, sometimes when you're printing, and another headache, sometimes when you are printing reports, sometimes the PDFs don't always line up that it go onto a second page. Um, and that's why if you put it into a Word or Excel, you can eliminate some of the field and get it on the one page. But if you know how to manipulate those things, um, it helps. So I just threw out a bunch of stuff really quickly. What I, you know, uh, first of all, if there's any questions or more questions, I'm happy to, to help with them. If you want to take some time, um, you know, to work on your team and your opponents while I'm here, and if you run into hurdles, I can come to each computer. You're welcome to do that. If you feel like you've had enough and you're ready to leave, you're welcome to do that. Um, it really, it really comes down to what you guys want or what you guys need. Um, so if you want, you know, I'm done with the aspects. This cheat sheet is something I put together. I've gotten some good feedback that it kind of helps guide people along. Um, if you, you know, if you're working with the system and you have questions, don't hesitate to call me. I, if, if you don't have my cell phone, you know, I, I'll have, I, I don't know if I put it on here or not. Um, I'll send it out to everybody. Yeah, Josh. Has. Um, feel free to call me anytime. If I can't answer, I won't, but I'll get back to you. If you want to text me a quick question, um, I'll be honest, I'm probably getting calls three or four days a week about just questions about our um, And I can answer most of them. And then it'll you know, be quicker than you going through, through their tech support. Um, so I, I know it's a system that has some issues, and they're still working through some of those issues. But if we can get everybody on board and everybody doing their part right, I think it can be a very powerful system. Um, the fact that the state's giving it to us for free and Schedule Star, I think, just doubled their rate. Certainly was a good time for us. Um, and we have six buildings and he gets six different accounts. So Schedule Star was getting pretty expensive for us. But uh, tool-wise, I think it does just about everything Schedule Star was doing in a little different manner. Um, but again, it is much more interdependent than Schedule Star was. Schedule Star tried to do the interdependent thing and we finally gave up on it. Uh, and Dolphin changed the program where we didn't have to. But this system, with the fact that we use signers, information going to the state, uh, I think the interdependence piece is critical and that's what makes it so important that everybody get their teams and, and sites set up correctly so everybody's getting the right information the first time around and we're not backtracking and redoing, redoing some work. Um, questions? Right, again, you're welcome to enter teams and opponents and stuff, and I can help out with that. Or if you know, that, but that's really all I got. And like Josh, do you want to talk about transfers at all, or which have nothing to do with this? But uh, no. Okay. Um, so again, welcome to stay, or if you've had enough, you're welcome to leave. Thank you, Scott. Anytime. Thanks, guys. Scott, like the one thing I've noticed is both Woodward and I entered week one football for this year, you know, August 26th. And so one's ours and one's theirs. It's month eight for us. Both of them are showing up on the day. I can highlight Woodward and 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 I can highlight